Hello and welcome to this big match preview here on Back of the Net. We're an AFC Bournemouth fan channel and this weekend it's a big, big game for the Cherries. My name's Sam. My name's Tom. If you want to do a couple of things, Everton fans, Bournemouth fans or whether you're neutrals taking an eagle eye of what's going on this weekend, then you can do a couple of things. Click that big fat subscribe button, that's the main one, we really appreciate that. And also give it a like, gets us gets us on to more people get to see it, more eyes on it, better for the algorithms, do all that good stuff. And yeah, it mean a lot, thank you very much. It will certainly mean a lot. And look, it feels like a big game for Bournemouth. It probably does for Everton. Yeah. Maybe not as big as the last game we played there though, right? Here's what happened. <laughs> that was they needed the win and we apparently we sent a few scares up them a few shivers up their spines because they said that we played well it didn't feel like we played overly well did it but the narrow one nil score line mm. suggests that yeah it was squeaky bum time but they came good it was a wonder goal in the end mm. and premier league safety was confirmed there was a stage during that game that they were actually down, wasn't that? Yeah, was it? Um, was it Leicester were, were winning or something yeah, like that? Yeah, they took the lead. But I think, yeah, it, it was a weird one for us because obviously we knew we were involved in such a big game. But really, it was there was nothing on it for us, was there? Mm. So, um, yeah, I always, I did always feel, I'm not going to lie, that Everton would get it done because there was so much more in the game for them. I know that can work the other way sometimes. Teams relax, but yeah, I thought they probably probably deserved to get that win and. Uh, yeah, do what they, they always do, really, and just, just manage to stay above that dotted line, which is where they are at the moment as well. Mm. So if we check out the league table, this is where Bournemouth are. It's not pretty reading, is it? We are in 19th place. Everton have got four points. They recently did secure a win, though, and a good win at that. That was at Brentford, mm. where they played them off the park. But I tell you what, they're fans, Tom. Mm. They must be getting frustrated because there are some real inconsistent performances, not least their last home game where yeah. they dropped points to what many teams thought would be one of the whipping boys in the Premier League this year. Luton Town, they got yeah. a win at Goodison, didn't they? Good performance from them. It was, and I think, yeah, Luton seemed to have... Yeah, they had something about them in that game and obviously they, they had something to hold on to and I think, uh, they, they, you know, Luton deserve credit as well. But Everton, yeah, it's consistently inconsistent, isn't it, really? I mean, it's weird thinking... Yeah, the two sides ourselves and Everton have both taken points off Brentford because uh, Brentford are a decent outfit. But yeah, it's, it's a weird one of Everton because I think when Deutsch went in, I thought oh, that'd be really compact, really hard to beat. And then you've seen them against Luton and set pieces and you think that's surprising. And they've, they've got a few new bodies in. Obviously, we know one very well, but I just don't, I don't know if he's been given the tools to to have players that will fit his style perfectly. I think they, they look like, as I say, that Brentford game, you thought, oh, has he found something here? And then they won in the cup. But then the Luton game. So, yeah, really well. I think they'll be like that all season, to be honest with you. But both clubs know we'll probably be scrapping with each other. Uh, we certainly are at the moment. And, uh, yeah, as much as we keep thinking it's a big game for us, it's a big game for Everton as well. They don't want to be losing at home to, uh, you know, Everton and Bournemouth back-to-back. -back. Mm, they certainly don't. We'll take a quick look at the baseline tracker table that sees AFC Bournemouth on zero. So what that means is that we're actually doing OK, but the actual league table itself suggests that we haven't done too well. But the thing is, four of our games have been against the big six clubs. Another two have been against the teams that were in the top six at the time. Yeah. 
And then the other was Brentford, who were always a tricky one, and only due to a slip did we actually not win that game. Yeah. But Everton's games, well, I think fans would probably say they have been considerably easier. We'll go over their results very, very soon. But Sean Dyche, mate, he's in charge at Goodison, mm. and he's got a task. And I don't know what the deal is with Everton, because they're about to move into their new stadium. Brownlee Moore Dock is coming on really well, I think, from the start of next season. That's where right. they want to play. They want to be playing Premier League football at that brand new, yeah. spanking new stadium. The Championship... It would be weird if they were playing championship football there. Yeah, hundred percent, mate. That's true. I, yeah, I didn't think of that. Cause it's going to be the um, you know, last time we probably go to Goodison. Mm. So, yeah, it is, it is a weird one. Cause, and you look at Everton historically, and you look at them, I think it's a big football club, and you know, with with a lot of history, and to to see where they've been so recently, and you know, I know there's a lot of um, uncertainty and you know, kind of disappointment with the ownership. But yeah, you you look at them and just think, how are they not? You feel like it would be a great job because you go, you could suddenly get them back to the big time. But everyone that goes there just seems to just just can't do it. And it, it seems like it's one of them one of them jobs that is just like it's just horrible for every manager at the moment. No one can seem to get it right, and I don't think the recruitment's been good enough. I mean, they've spent some money over the year, and some of the players just haven't performed, and some of the big players get injuries. Just feels like nothing's going right for them. But yeah, like you say, Matt, I think this season if they could just make sure they stay above that line. Keeps it. Then they got the new stadium, maybe yeah. new ownership. Then maybe they can start building. But the key thing is what I just said is that they cannot go down. No, exactly. And that new ownership, you know, when it happens, of course, yeah. being a Premier League club is a lot more attractive to buy. So they mm. certainly don't want to be going down. You can ask our owner Bill Foley about that because it was a case of waiting until Bournemouth were Premier League until he took it over. Let's take a look at Everton's results so far then mm. this season. And Tom, it's fair to say. Yep. didn't start particularly well. I mean, everyone at that point in time was a bit of an unknown entity. Yep. Some people already were saying, oh, I think Everton are doomed or they're going to be there or thereabouts. So I think I was a little bit optimistic at first. Yep. But then I saw what happened on the first day. Fulham at home didn't mm. go so well, did it? No, it lost at home to Fulham, which is a game that you, you know, just bet at Fulham, but you think, oh, that's not a bad one to maybe get something from. Um, and then got absolutely battered by Villa. Lost out in the Wolves, another one you think you've got to get a result. And then I remember watching that cup game against Doncaster. They were lucky. They were 1-0 down. I think at the time, Doncaster were bottom of League 2. Yeah. And they were playing them off the park. And I think it was the new sign in Beto come on. I think it changed a few bits. I think Dan Dreamer might have got the winner. Mm. Um, and that seemed to just weirdly, as much as they were awful in that game, you thought, oh, that might be what they need. And then they got the point at Sheffield United where they played okay. Mm. The Arsenal game, 1-0, probably flattered Everton. They weren't competitive in that game. So all of them games I've spoken about, you think, well, they're doomed. And then suddenly, they're going to Brentford and win 3-1. I thought they were brilliant. I thought they were brilliant in that game. I remember watching it and just thinking Everton played them off the park. And then in the cup, you go, well, that's a bank of a Villa at home. And they win that. So, And then they go and lose to Luton. It's, yeah, it's Everton. Isn't it? I mean, Everton fans that are watching this would be going, yeah, that's what we're used to, I think. But... Um, yeah, so we're one to judge, and it's really bizarre in my head because I've just spoken about Everton losing at home to Luton, mm. at home to Fulham, at home to Wolves. But in my head, Goodison's a tough place to go. I know. It's exactly. weird, isn't it? Um, I know that for ourselves, we have never left Goodison happy as a football club. <laughs> well, yeah, there are caveats to that. I mean, we have got a result once, but we mm. did get relegated. Exactly. So you're right, we've never left happy. And that's the only time we've actually managed to get a result at Goodison Park. As you Jesus. check the head-to-head, -head, all of the Bournemouth wins you can see are in green, are in W, and all but one are at home. So look, you can see that we didn't really play each other that often until no. we entered the Premier League. We've had some classic games between us. Everton fans will be pleased to know that Junior Stanislas is not fit and is not actually part of the squad anymore because I swear he probably he loved it, didn't he? makes them shake with concern. However, we, we did register some really good wins, a 1-0, 2-1, 3-1. A 4-1 at home, that was in the League Cup last season under Gary O'Neill. A 3-0, mm. that was a, an interim charge for yeah. Gary O'Neill before he got the permanent job. But that 3-1 there under Eddie Howe, uh, it, was a, it was a good result. And one where we were waiting on another fixture, yeah. Villa West Ham, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. Praying, hoping. But in the end, we went down and we've got goal line technology to thank. Thank you, yeah. Maybe, well, I'll tell you what we should do. We should maybe ask for a replay of that yeah. season. Yeah, maybe. That could be something we could do, couldn't it? That might help. Yeah, but um, it's unprecedented um, what happened to last weekend, didn't it? No, you never get decisions like that yeah. go against you, you know. Goal on technology just didn't work for a, 
for a week. Anyway, anyway, we're going on. We're going off on a tangent. It's fine. But yeah, it's, it's very bizarre that we've, like I say, never officially left Goodison happy. And the only time we've actually ever won there was probably the most disappointed we were because we were relegated. I know that was COVID anyway, so no fans were there. But yeah, I thought that. I thought it must be that sort of record because I thought I've been there a few times and we never... I've never been happy afterwards. So, yeah, not ideal, mate. And, and weirdly, you went for a lot of good wins there for us, obviously at home. But the one that stands out for me was the draw. That 3 all first Premier League season. What a game that was. Um, they, I can't remember who scored for them. Was it Ross Barkley? Ross Barkley and they scored were on the pitch. what he thought was the winner. Yeah, and then, um, yeah, Stan went out the other end like the 97th minute. Crazy game. So, yeah, we've had some really good games with them. And I'm, I think I've seen a few little bits where there's often goals. Mm. So, both teams probably struggling for that at the moment. So, yeah, it remains to be seen whether it will be a, a cagey one where someone tries to nick it 1-0 or it will be a real basketball match. Who knows? Who knows? We gained a number of Everton subscribers after the final day of last season, obviously them gorging on our vlog, but also I think, I think about 60,000 tuned in to our away day review show as well. Legends. And that was where we, we had rated how good it was. We're going to be doing that again this season. So mm. there's another reason to subscribe but in the comments below we, I would love to know your true thoughts on where you think this season is heading Everton fans let me know what why are there problems what's the remedy is it managerial is it levels above that I sort of detect it is by some of the unrest and yeah. there's also some conjecture about what's happening with the ownership let us know because we want to learn about your club and find out exactly what is happening one thing we do know is that your transfer window has been Pretty busy. They've had a few arrivals, haven't they, Tom? Yeah, uh, obviously one notable for us was our now Dan Juma, who nearly went to you guys last season, nearly come back to us yeah. and went to Tottenham, weirdly, and never really kicked the ball. Um, but yeah, he's it's a weird one. I mean, you'll see later if I predict him to play, but he's kind of started, then he's come in at the team, he's played up front, he's played wide. He is one of them players, obviously we know him pretty well, um, one of them players that has got undoubted ability a real classy player, but is he a little bit luxury when you're in a scrap? Yeah. Maybe. Um, but yeah, he's, he certainly believes his own hype. He's, um, I don't mind that about him. He's got an arrogance about him that I'm not being funny. He nearly single-handedly took us up in that Championship COVID season. He's got a lovely arrogance. There was a Brian's Gun tweet that used that phrase, lovely arrogance. He's got a nice arrogance about him. But is it a nice arrogance? Because to me, mm. I think it's just annoying, actually, to be fair. Because do you remember that tweet that he did in his training top, AFC Bournemouth training top, on the day that Gary O'Neill mm. got sacked? He yeah. posed for a photo yeah. in that, which made Bournemouth fans wonder, OK, are we going to get him? And as a result, Bournemouth fans were, were singing his name. Uh, yes. Also, joins Everton, well, takes media photos with him or whatever, mm. then arrives at Spurs, Spurs yeah. plays for them for a bit, for a bit, and kind then goes of. back to Everton. He's a... It's a weird one. I think he's, he's a weird player. He's one of them that when, you, when you're not doing very well and you're not playing very well and he posts these sort, sort of things and shows his arrogance, it is, like you say, it's annoying because you think, come on, get on with it. But I remember in the championship when he's scoring every game and he's yeah. our best player, you think, oh, I love that. Do you know what I mean? He, he is what it is. He's, he certainly, um, you know, I certainly don't mind that he's got that character about him. He's but, done it at a high level as well, Champions League. Yeah, level. of course. And he is a good player. I just I just wonder at sometimes that, you know, he needs to be in a team that are, that are functioning really well and then you get the best out of him because is he going to knuckle down, track back? That's why I was surprised Everton got him, actually, just because of what I think I know about Shorten Dykes as a manager, this style. But it was a decent sign anyway. Beto looks still early days, but he looks like it could be a handful for him as well up top um, when he plays. Uh, still a bit raw. I think Jack Harrison hasn't really played uh, through injuries, but he was a decent sign. And Ashley Young, good bit of experience brought back. I thought he's actually done better than I thought he would. Mm. I thought he'd come in as a backup, but he's kind of helped them a little bit. And um, yeah, they, they lost a few. I think, uh, weirdly, they got Jared Braithwaite back from his loan. Mm. He was obviously an Everton player, but he went out on loan. I think it was to PSV Eindhoven. Mm. Done really well. And he's come back in and been like a new signing for him. Um, the only notable ones that they lost really was a Wobi to, to Fulham. I think oh, that yeah. kind of made sense. Didn't really work for him. And Damari Gray uh, went to Saudi, didn't he? Yeah. Um, so yeah, they lost a few others. I think Yerry Mina went in the end. Obviously Begovic that left us for them. Yeah. Has now got a QPR. I think more pay, Holgate. But yeah, I think really it was they've they've let a few go, got a few in, nothing major. But um, yeah, it remains to be seen on a few of them. Like I say, Dan Juma better. I think there's still the best to come from them. In all our away league games against Everton, Bournemouth have won one, drawn zero and lost five. But in all competitions, Bournemouth have actually won six, drawn two, lost nine. So it's not so bad. Mm -hmm. I'm going to chuck in something 
optimistic now. Oh, this will be our second Dan Juma Derby this year, won't it? Dan Juma Derby? Yeah. Well, we played him when he was playing at Spurs. Oh, sorry, yeah, that was this year, wasn't he, it? I keep thinking that was last year. He scored, he yeah, celebrated, shame on you, but then we got the winner. Could it be the same again? Hey, that's a good point, that's a very good point. Yeah, Could no, it be I don't the mind same that. again? I don't mind. You never know. You never know. Ugh. No, I don't, I don't like you being optimistic. Weren't you optimistic last week? Yeah, I was, yeah. You said we were going to be arse, didn't you? So look, you are yeah. a maniac. Let's just let's just talk. So Everton fans, just to um, let you into our inner circle a little bit, because I'm sure you didn't watch our second look, did you? After Arsenal defeat, you didn't. Why? Why are you not watching that? No, we can understand why. Um, analyze your thoughts and how you feel this week, mate, because it's not it's not the worst situation in the world for Bournemouth fans. But we're we're kind of simmering, aren't we? And a loss, I. A loss or a bad performance could send social media into meltdowns Especially with this a... weekend because this is one of the games we're looking at. Like, okay, yeah. So there's pressure. There's big pressure. There's pressure on both sides. Especially with an international break to come, so you dwell on it for a, for a few weeks as well. Um, I think, yeah, Everton fans, if you don't know, there is no disrespect to to you at all. But um, our fixtures, we looked at our fixtures. Um, we played what Liverpool. We've lost to Liverpool, Tottenham, Arsenal, Brighton. We drew with Chelsea, Brentford, West Ham. Yeah. Um, so you look at, you hear all them fixtures and go, that's a bloody horrible start. So obviously we saw that pack and went, right, October then, because we've got Everton away, Wolves home, Burnley home. So we've always targeted October, unless we surprise people in them early games, which ultimately we didn't because we haven't won a game. So that's kind of expected. Yeah. But now you're going, okay, so that's expected. But because we didn't surprise anyone, October is huge. Mm. I think we've got to get minimum of two wins out of the three. Mm. So ultimately that means if we lose to Everton, it just means we've got to win the other two. And listen, if we if we don't get the result, it's not the end of the world because there's 30 games left to play. So let's calm down. We were, I think we were bottom of the league in this year yeah. under under O'Neill and we stayed up with games to spare. So the season's a long, long way away. I think the the issue is it's a new style, it's a new gaffer. And if you haven't won you know, in this amount of time and not performing, you start to question a little bit. Um, I don't think I'll do it after this game. Obviously, yeah. we'll see what happens, but... I think if we went for October and we, we still haven't won a game, I'll certainly be be panicking a little bit, mate. I'm not going to lie. Um, we'll be. And yeah, it's a weird one because I we've had all these fixtures where I haven't expected us to win any football match that we've played because yeah. of who we're playing against. I've always been like, oh, we can nick a point today. Um, so now I'm like, I just want to go into a game thinking we can win. And now we are. I am bricking it. Yeah. And all I, I wish we were playing City. I can't be yeah, asked. Yeah. <laughs> I can't be asked for the stress of it. I really can't. Um, yeah, I'm just, I'm worried about it. On one hand, I'm going, they've lost to Luton at home. They lost to Wolves at home. Like, oh, we could beat these. And then the other hand, I just go, oh, we never do well at Goodison. I'm, it's, it's, yeah, it's nervy and, and it's massive for both teams. It's a big, big game, mate. But yeah, um, I'm and worried. I'm and, worried. And also, it's just, I, I don't know about you, but it, it feels like there's a bit, just a, a negative vibe. Yeah. over Dean Court at the moment due to obviously people on social media and including ourselves that have commented about the kind of hospitality and then you've got Liverpool tickets that are going on sale for like uh, what £13 more than what the previous round was, was on sale for. It's like for. Over, over 70% increase in price from, oh, from I just Stoke wonder, to Liverpool. I wonder what would happen if we faced Port Vale. Yeah, exactly, yeah. Uh, I don't know, but... Um, yeah, th- and then just lots of different issues. Tyler Adams being out for longer than expected, and all these different things. Mm. We're missing. We're missing that. That you know, a player in that position, and he he was the one, but now he's injured, and r- rumours of two, three months. You kind of thinking, oh my goodness me! Yeah. But I don't know. It just feels like so. We as a club, we just we just need a win. We yeah, need- we need we need a pick up, and like you say, you mentioned Tyler Adams there, but you know, our two biggest signings of of what what looked like a you know quite a, it was a busy window for us. Mm. Uh, both crocked, basically. Tyler Adams, Alex Scott. We might not see either of them this year, mm. potentially. Uh, might not see either of them before Christmas. And yeah, that's, that's frustrating. And um, yeah, and I think it's more the fact that I think if we were coming to this game after the Brighton game, we'd go, okay, there were bits there. I think it's I think it's the fact that the Arsenal game, and don't get me wrong, it was Arsenal, we just seemed to melt after a goal um, and there was no real positives. So I think that's why everyone's a little bit more, ah, that was a worry because we'd at least been causing problems for yeah. the other teams. So yeah, remains to be seen, mate, but hopefully we can, um, we can surprise. I've been, I've been like this before. I was like at loads last season where I thought, well, we're done. Mm. We're down, we're crap. And then suddenly we pull a result out. So, you know, they've just done it uh, when, by going to, we were just talking about Everton's yeah. results and then they went to Brentford and won. You know, it's football, mate. Um, and hopefully the, 
the lads are up for it and we can get something. But um, yeah, it won't be easy. It'll be for a Ever- tense one. For Everton, players out injured recently include Deli Ali, uh, Seamus Coleman, also Andre Gomez as well. Earlier today, Andoni Iriola had his press conference and by the magical power of my hand, the team news is across the bottom of the screen there. So who would you say is your um, player to watch, mm. Tom? Because yeah. I thought with a certain injury, Everton would lack goals. That player's come back and now maybe it's starting to tick yeah. a, li- a little bit. Yeah, maybe. Obviously, you're alluding to Calvert-Lewin there. Or um, am I? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I know. Um, yeah, no, I'd probably say him. I mean, I think it'd be easy. We've already spoke about Dan Juma a little bit, I think. But I think that's more just a fit, thought of... So the next player, player, yeah, yeah, you're, always, yeah. you're always a little bit worried. But I think Calvert Lewin, yeah, just because he's, you know, listen, we all know when he's fit, he's been in England squads and deservedly so. And you could still argue a point that if he was, if he never got injured, he could have been the closest to Kane. I think you can make an argument for that, whether you agree with it or not. Unfortunately, I'm sure Everton fans know that you're only going to get him for a few games and he's going to be injured. But it looks like one of the games will be this one. Yeah. So um, he, he looks like he's fit and and getting back to it. So yeah, he's probably the, the one to watch, I'd say. Um, they got a few, obviously, decent players there. I think Decore as well, the fact that he got the worldie against us, didn't yeah, he? Yeah, yeah. And he could just pop up a little bit, Dykes uses him a little bit further forward, and he's um, he's one to watch as well. But um, yeah, I think Calvert-Lewin is, is that main threat from, from that side of the pitch, for sure. Do you want to know the referee? Nope. Couldn't give a... The referee, I've done this joke before, is an absolute coot. Oh, he's a cootie pie. David Coot. Uh, did we win when we didn't? No. We that? drew against Chelsea. Okay, okay. So I thought I, I thought he had a I thought he had a reasonable performance there. What's Tom's performance going to be like picking the teams? Should we find out? Shall we? Shall we? It's coming up. Right, Tom. Let's go for it there. Now we'll start with Everton. You were in a four-four-one-one. One. Yeah, pretty much, mate. What um, are we going for? What are we going for? We're going to go for old Jordan Pickford and goal. I think um, that makes perfect sense. I don't think we need to say too much about that. Um, hopefully he doesn't have a great I, I still think he's a top goalie I don't think he gets credit by the way um, back four I think they've obviously they've had a few injuries there and I think um, Ashley Young's done really well at right full back so I think he'll stay I expect that I expect Tarkovsky and Brave, Braithwaite to stay as the centre half pair and have been pretty solid for him of late um, Mikolenko a minute left back he'll be seeing his um, compatriot Zabani can't be it's, uh, maybe it's, there's not many games where there's um, you know, a couple of the Ukrainians in the Premier League they're two of the ones that played against yeah. England so that will be nice for them to see each other I'm sure um, yeah and then the four across the midfield I'm going to go with I'm, yeah I'm going to go with Ghana off, yeah I'm going to go off Ghana off that right side he's been doing quite well for them um, in the middle we're going to conti- yeah I'm going to continue with Anana and Gway give a bit of protection there I'm going to put Dan Juma in I know they've played McNeil they've done a few bits but I just think that he'll look at it and go against his old club might have a bit between his teeth yeah and then, as I mentioned, the core a little bit higher up, playing just off Dominic Calvert Lewin. That's how I think they'll go, mate. So, yeah, it might be McNeil's one that could come in, but I just feel like they might go to Dan Juma. Okay, and in terms of Bournemouth, then I suppose it's the standard four, two, yeah. three, one. Yeah, I tried to um, manifest last week, didn't I, and do a team that I wanted to see that didn't really happen. So, yeah, I'm going to revert back a little bit. Neto, obviously, in goal. Back four, I think, speaks for itself, particularly with with Lord Kelly out injured. Um, so right to left, Max Ahrens, uh, Ilya Zabani, Marcos Alessi and Milos Kerkes. Um, even though I would quite like to see Joe Rothwell come in, I think he's going to continue personally with uh, Lewis Cook, uh, Philip Billing and then Ryan Christie um, just in front of them. It's the same position I'm going to rotate because this seems to be what we're doing at the moment. So Tavernier I think will stay in. I think Dom will obviously lead the line. Um, I'm going to go with Semenyo to come in. I think you can make, listen, you can make a case for Brooks, you can make a case for Stilistera coming in, Watara maybe a little bit, Clive was the one that started the last game, but I would quite like to see, and I think he'll put Semenyo in because he's, it will mean that Tav will go to that left, and I want to see Tav running at Ashley Young, Ashley Young's not young, mm. I, want, I want to see Tav yeah, running at him, so um, uh, yeah, I, I, think that would, um, I think that would work best, but yeah, we've got options in them wide areas, but... Yeah, I, I think that'll probably be the team. Like I say, I, I wouldn't mind seeing Rothwell in there, but I still think that's a good enough side. And we'll have a bit of ammo on the substitute bench as well, mate. Yeah. So, um, yeah, interesting to see. And could be a case of which Dom, mm. which Dom, you know. I've, I've got a feeling... Ten of two Doms. I've got a feeling they might have even played together for the under-21s. Yeah, I expect they have. I, yeah. think, I think they had a, a you know, Dom double act up front for England. So, yeah, which Dom will, will come out on top might be the difference, mate. 
It's 11 games now since Bournemouth have last won in the league. It would be nice to start a winning run, wouldn't it? What's your score prediction? Put it in the comment below. We would love to read them and hopefully feel a little bit optimistic as we travel up to Merseyside. It's It's a long trip. Safe travels, Bournemouth fans. And yeah, it's what, about five hours in it? About five hours or so. Yeah, but um, I'll mate, be the one asleep in the back. Yeah, you'll be asleep in the back. The weather's actually going to be pretty good, actually. No rain, so that's good for fan cams when Tom's present. Oh no, Ben's going to be presenting, isn't he? He, he hates presenting fan cams. Um, yeah, weather's going to be good. It's going to be sunny up there. It's going to be 20 degrees. So I'd say t-shirt weather. Might, might even don the shorts and flip-flops for the last time this year. Oh, really? Or shorts, at least. Maybe not flip-flops. Yeah, you don't want to be doing that. But yeah, save travels if you're going up. And yeah, I really hope... That's got a bit that we more can, positive, that. Hope we can pull a win out of the bag. Um, I think what's key is an early goal. Because their fans could turn. If we score That's early... Yeah, their, their fans might be turning a, on them. And, you know, we can hopefully then get a second, get a third. Yeah, no, I thought... I'm Hopeful? Not, yeah, I know what you mean, though. I think it's it's one of them that if they were to get an early goal, they can really be that 12th man for them and get them over the line. Whereas, as you say, if we get it, they could turn a little bit. Um, but, yeah, I keep saying that, but then I think, Ugh, Brighton, we scored first, and then at Anfield, we scored early, mm. and we didn't win any games. But, yeah, like you say, I think, um, see how we start the game, mate, see how it goes. But what are you saying? Go on, I'm, get, get a prediction out of you. Oh, go on, think with that head. It's... 3-1 Bournemouth. Christ, he's lost his head again. He's done it again. He's... Um, <coughs> oh, why does he keep doing it? What are you going for? 1-0. What? Yeah, 1-0. Head, head 1-0. Yeah, I don't... I don't I, yeah, I hope I'm wrong, but I, I, I don't see it at the moment. I honestly don't. I think um, such a boring prediction. Oh, yeah, it's got you. But yeah, it's gonna be. A, it's hundred percent last game on match of the day. Hundred percent. One one draw. I'm gonna go. Um, but we'll win the next two at home. We'll beat Liverpool in the cup. So yeah, everything'll be fine. But I, I do think this will be a, a be a tough game for us. Um, yeah, and I think it will be a score draw. Okay. Well, I'm gonna be uh, busy reading everyone's predictions. Thank you so much, by the way. Thank you for everyone that's supporting Back of the Net. We truly appreciate it. If you don't know of ways to support us other than liking, subscribing, and all that kind of stuff, and sharing on social media, we've also got the Back of the Net membership as well, which is just a, a small monthly minimum of three pounds. You got to a hundred pounds a month if you want. I mean, that would be a bit silly, but from as little as three pounds a month and all the funds go back into supporting the channel. As part of that, we'll put you on our chat group, our telegram group, where there's a community that comes together to experience Tom's player ratings shows exclusively on the uh, day after every game. Also bloopers, first looks, show input, and a lot more. If you want to get involved in that, just go to afcbpodcast.com forward slash coffee. Honestly, we truly appreciate the support. And also, uh, a number of people have asked about the Football Content Awards and have tagged us in mentions and stuff I've noticed on Twitter and social media. We, we talked about this in the last show. Check out afcbpodcast.com because we've written out an article about that. Tiggs has done an article about the Academy products. Keefe T's done an article about the Jennings effect. Richard Jackson's done a cracking fairy tale of Cherrytown article as well. Have you, have you read that? It's brilliant. Yes. It's absolutely brilliant. Content. Podcast.com. Content kings. Oh. And that's not even us. That's Richard, Keith and Tigsy. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you at Goodison Park. We hope it's going to be not a blue day, but a red day. Oh. Up the chairs. Up the chairs. Why was I so nervous? <laughs>